ultimately why I chose Synced Up was as a, a growing company, their founding vision, why they exist, it served my need. It was exactly what I needed to mm -hmm. fill my need. And I mean, while AMM may have served my need, the company wasn't where I wanted to go. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't know anything about Synced Up when I first saw it. I was like, what, what's Synced Up? That's weird. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> then seeing you at, uh, Launch Burn Academy was the best thing that, that happened to the business. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. I remember getting a phone call on the way I was driving home from Launchpreneur and uh, you called me and you were like, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we are in central Pennsylvania here on a beautiful late May day. We're close to an airport, so we might have to pause here and there to cut out the planes going over. And we've got a really gracious homeowner here yeah. that's given us some nice <laughs> chairs to sit on because I didn't bring chairs. And this incredible coffee cup from South America, which is like a gourd. If you're watching the video version of this, you get to see it. It's pretty cool. But, uh, okay, back to business. I'm here with Elmer uh, from Potted Luck Landscaping, and uh, I'm looking forward to just having a good conversation with you. I mean, it's a continuation yeah, of the conversations <laughs> that we have in the car. Like, yeah. We were, we were, we've seen what, two, three jobs already. Got to yeah. meet your crew. Mm -hmm. And um, so anyway, I'll stop talking. Give me an intro of uh, yourself and how you got into the business. Okay, so 10 years ago, I started working for a local landscape company in um, eastern, southeastern Pennsylvania. And um, worked there for four and a half, five years. How old were you when you started? Uh, just after, uh, almost 16. Okay, That's similar to me, I guess. I was and then... Biking to work? Yeah. Yep, same here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what was the company, um, how garden, big was the... Garden Keepers, uh, we had, uh, when I started it was two crews, when I left it was probably like four or five Okay, crews. so it was growing. It was growing. <clears throat> how, how, and... With, like, did you did they run like two three man crews or were they larger? Mostly three man crews. Mm -hmm. Were they, did they do design build maintenance or both? Ma a lot of maintenance heavy, <coughs> uh, a lot of maintenance, and then also uh, had an install crew. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. And what were you on the maintenance or or on the? Install? I started out on the maintenance crew and then I ended up on the install crew. Okay, mm -hmm. and then uh, what took you to the area where you're at now? Uh. I uh, married in 2017 and then moved to Cumberland County. So. Okay, was that where your love wife was from? Me, yeah, yeah. <laughs> love moved you. There you go. I like that. Yeah, um, and that's when you um, that's when you were like, okay, I was I I loved landscaping. I loved yeah. installing uh, beautiful landscapes, and um, I was I kind of wanted to do my own thing. Kind of had my own night, what I wanted to do, and um, started my own landscaping. Yeah. Yeah. I like doing my own thing too. <laughs> <laughs> so today, so when you started, was it just by yourself, or did you have an employee right away? Or I did not have an employee right away. Probably um, the first two months, I did. I was on my own, just doing um, like random tree planting jobs sure. and um, putting all my energy, a lot of my energy, into like selling uh, landscapes that never came to fruition. I see. <laughs> Do, doing some design work or like designing for free and like... Designing for someone that just wanted a free estimate. Yeah, yeah. Uh, not a free estimate, just wanted a tree. Like yeah, I was, yeah, so yeah. Landscape well, that shows the passion. That's what you <laughs> wanted, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So what does Potted Luck look like today? Um, today we are a design build company. Uh, we have, we do still do some maintenance. Started out doing a lot of maintenance in the last three, four years, we've gotten into a lot of install, hardscape install work. Um, and then in the last year, we've only started doing like full outdoor, full blown outdoor living spaces. I see, so that was just in the last year. Just in the last year. Wow. Yeah. And we are um, on a beautiful property right now. I mean, it's just like in a, I don't know, what, 20, 30 year old development here? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, 20, 30 years old. And uh, it's a home, I'm guessing, built in the 80s or maybe 90s. Um, and I love the project we're sitting on right now. Like, it's got this contemporary vibe with, like, the, the steel planters, the, the gray limestone boulders, and the square design, modern design, gray pavers. Like, it, it, and what's funny is it's got that modern vibe, but it blends beautifully with the 1980s-style ran low-level rancher house. Mm -hmm. 
Like, it's really, really cool. You've done a really nice job. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. It was definitely one of my favorite jobs where I was, I was allowed to bring in the metal that I wanted to do, yeah. like the Corten metal. I just, uh, I've done a lot of jobs where I was able to introduce some, but this is definitely where I've done the most, and I want to continue to do more like this. It's almost like a... I don't know. It's almost like the like the equivalent of barn wood in interior mm -hmm. design. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. like it's got this rustic mm -hmm. um, slash modern, you know, like uh, in the interior design, I'd be picturing like, you know, white or gray paint with barn wood accents. Sure. You know, yeah, exactly. To complement what's mm -hmm. going on with out here mm -hmm. on the out, uh, mm -hmm. on the out uh, side. So it's really, really nice. I, now you're gonna make me want to go home and redo all my. I did all mine kind of rustic and rounded. <laughs> okay. Uh, happy to happy to make you. Some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And no, I, I, my appetite for projects in my own house has been it, it's filled. I'm I'm good for a while. <laughs> okay. Uh, That's good. You get to enjoy it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I definitely live the uh, um, the old adage of. A shoe cobbler's kids never have any shoes, mm, right? Mm -hmm, sure. I did landscaping and never had any landscaping basically till I was till we had started synced up pretty much, and I was out of the crew full time. That then I finally did it. So, Got it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, well, yeah. So back to what pot, pot of luck looks like looks like today. So you're doing design build into outdoor moving into outdoor living. Moving into largely outdoor living. Yeah. yeah. And um, did you say already how many guys you have? I forget. Uh, so now we have a team of five. Okay. I'm adding two more to fill in some roles this month. Okay. And one office admin. Uh, yeah. Okay. And plus me. And pl plus yourself. And what what does your typical day or week look like? Like, what are you doing, and what role are you filling in the business besides just chief problem solver? <laughs> uh, right now, I'm doing a good bit of work in the field. Um, that's where I ultimately want to be. That's where my passion is. I love creating and designing. Um, I do sales one one or two days a week, and then um, I'm working towards having my admin build the estimates through Synced Up, which is incredible. I can just tell her what I the items that we need for the job, and and um, build from build the estimate proposal from there. Mm -hmm. um, I, uh, between running a uh, maintenance and install crew, I juggle between the two wherever I'm most needed and, um, yeah. Okay. And uh, do you typically, you typically run two install crews? No, only one install crew. One install one crew. One install, okay. one maintenance crew. Okay, mm -hmm. got it. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. And uh, The maintenance crew will come alongside the install crew with, like, planting, uh, lighting. Sure. Um, just the hardscape crew, so the hardscape crew, crew can focus on yeah. insulation. Yeah. And what is your growth, like, how many years ago did you start Potted Luck? 2017. Okay, so what does your growth curve look like? Like, what do you know, like, kind of what you did the first year and then uh, where you're at now? Yeah, like so that? the first year, we've been incredibly blessed ever since we started. Uh, the first year, I don't quite remember the numbers from the first year. It was, like, between one and 200. Yeah. Um, which I was... I was like young, and I thought I was that like was a lot of money. A lot of money yeah. at the time. Um, now it's like that won't even pay your biggest vendor <laughs> bill. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so um, then we we went from four fifty to eight fifty to now one point two. Okay. And I'm on track to I'm, my my goal is one point six for this year. So yeah, that's good growth. Yeah, um, a lot of that was you know we were we were going from maintenance to install, so that was so yeah, it was part it, it was bumping the numbers up, yeah, yeah. with oh. with roughly the same manpower as what you're correct, yeah, yeah, correct, yeah, and equipment like bumping it up with equipment, sure. Each, each year, over each year, we would add equi equipment and um, to help with efficiency and yeah. yeah. So um, what? What would you like Pot of Luck to, to look like in five years? Like, what's your dream? What's your vision? Like, what do you want it to be? Um, that's a great question. So, I would like to be um, a full outdoor living build company. Um, I've been, I've considering installing pools. I would like to. I will have to hire additional staff to be able to do that. Um, I'm still trying to figure out the why I want to do that. Um, but to serve the the need for 
outdoor living spaces and yeah. just create beauty outdoors. I know from at Tusky Landscaping there, like we did high end outdoor living spaces, sure. but no pools. Mm -hmm. And then when we started doing pools is when we got started landing the big jobs. Sure. Mm -hmm. That's when you got the multi mm -hmm. six figure mm -hmm. jobs. Cause the pool is the foundation to the, if you're gonna do a, if you're, it's like whoever does the pool does the rest of the the, the outdoor project. Sure, yeah. The patio, absolutely. the fireplace. That's, and every, you that's know. ultimately why yeah. I would be considering doing pools. Um, although like, I love doing jobs like this. We, had, um, we were here two, three weeks, and installed the boulder wall yeah. and the hardscape and, these are, and these are, with the metal. And, these are the kind of jobs uh, that pay the bills. Yeah, you know I mean? yeah, like, absolutely. So it's, it's not all about the big jobs, but I, I do ha like to have it, those those are the fun jobs for me. I it's I can um, sell the job and get the crew situated, and they can work for for a good while before mm -hmm. I, they need my attention again. Mm -hmm. um, but well, I, so, I love being part of the project as well and putting my effort into the details. And, yeah. So if you if you you know thinking about what you want Pot of Luck to look like in five years, like what would you want your role to be? Like, do you want to be the sales and design or do you want to just be kind of working in the background and everybody, there's a role, a person in every role? Or? I want to be, I want to be working in the field. I'm working hard to have the admins, to get the admin staff on the back end so that I can go home at the end of the day and be with my family. And would that include sales as well? Like you're, you know, I'll probably, to an extent, like I would like to, um, to be involved in sales, but, if I had the person that could take on sales, I would definitely do that. Mm -hmm. So back to five years from now, when you're doing your, uh, when you're looking out across your, your, the the, the dream is now fulfilled, mm -hmm. right? It, it's you want to be out in the field, um, and you enjoy sales, but maybe you don't want to be the only person doing sales. That's 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 what I'm. Thinking. Yeah, don't you don't want to be the bottleneck. That's to right. It. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's that's the only. That yeah. I'm trying to remove all the bottlenecks and. Um, so what yeah. when you say you want the you're you're trying to set up the admin systems to so that you can focus on the field and some sales, uh, what roles are those people like? What what's in your head like office admin and salesperson or like what's how would that look? Uh, an office admin that knows all every every facet of the business. Okay, so a pretty hand, not just a QuickBooks checker and a, Correct. yeah, like, yeah. Someone that can talk to customers. That's and, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And would that person be um, also doing quotes? Um, yes, that would, b building the quote, like I'm, I've learned that uh, this spring I've had somebody go with me on on a sales call and take notes and uh, take notes measurements I am solely focused on the client and I found that those jobs sell sold better for me like I could um, I could focus my entire attention on the client and that's selling. interesting um, and and that person that had all the measurements took all the notes can then go back build the estimate I can then just review it glance over it and like check it off so you're basically just managing the relationship that's correct the nuts and the bolts are happening mm -hmm. with yeah that's okay. the part that i i like and then if i can th that's so that's the relationship is a small is a small but a large part and i can then just continue to work in the field as mm -hmm. well mm -hmm. yeah so um with the two fellows that you're bringing on next week mm -hmm. um what's your vision for them so one will be joining the hardscape install crew as an experience. He's an experienced hardscape uh, installer. Um, just to, uh, I want to bring him on to help um, get the hardscape jobs moving faster and have more uh, be in and out a little bit faster. Um, and then another person to help fill in with the, the maintenance crew is short one person and we're just mm. not reaching around like we, sh we should. Okay, so done. that's the second person. Correct. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, that makes sense. So um, since 2017 when you started, what would you say has been your biggest challenge that you feel you've overcome mm -hmm. in business? Hmm. That's a great question. Probably, probably my numbers. Probably comes down to the numbers. Uh, staffing has been a challenge in the last two years, as, every, as we all know. 
Um, knowing my numbers has probably been been uh, the number one. Although, like, I, I feel that by none of my own doing, we've been incredibly blessed. Like, since we started, like, just by hitting, starting out with, um, I started out not knowing not knowing business at all, but I just know, knew that I needed to bring X amount of money a day to be able to support my family. And so that meant like going out, doing a maintenance job, whether it took us six or eight hours. Interesting. We, I would, so in at the, the end of the day, I'd had that much income. and Yeah. And, and I so would, you I, had the concept, yeah, and you probably learned this from your other uh, business. I work. did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You had the concept of like, okay, I need to make X to support my family. Uh, so you had done the math to say, well, that means I needed to bring in a minimum of this revenue per day. Mm -hmm. So you had that concept even before you, quote unquote, knew your numbers. Sure, yeah. yeah, absolutely. It was the point where I started doing more jobs that required materials and estimating those and knowing what my price should be at that point. The, the, the maintenance part was, was easy. Like if I You're had, basically selling time. It was selling time, that, that was easy. But yeah. uh, once we started doing more projects is where, where it, what was kind of a pain point. Mm -hmm. um, so what, like if you had to look back and say, well, before the know your numbers thing and your, you know, what, what were you living through or what were you experiencing? Um, so up until that point, I've been doing everything pen and paper. Um, it worked, worked okay. It was time consuming. Um, my wife helped largely with that. I did not have a CRM or like any any file of clients. And I knew I'm growing to that point where I need to do something. And yeah. I, I had been, yeah, so I was shopping for about two years, didn't know what was available, didn't know what, didn't even really know what I needed. Um, it, was, it was kind of a, a learn as I go. I've been busy working in the business, not having haven't studied business at all, mm -hmm. uh, but only in the last two years that I've done more, you know, uh, reading and researching on how to run a better business. So, uh, what was giving you, like, what were you feeling, or what was driving the need to get something, or to, like, what was driving your, like, you know, you said one of the biggest, you said that the biggest challenge you you uh, f that you had faced in business that you feel you've overcome by that criteria, one was the knowing your numbers. So before you tackled it or through, during the challenge, what, what was the pain or what was the problem or what was the, why, why not continue as you were? Um, the pain was I, I knew I couldn't grow um, without having to put more energy into it. Like I would come home each night and look over my day's numbers and um, I, wanted to spend more time with my wife at the end of the day, not just, mm -hmm. not just um, do books. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to streamline that process to have, to be able to um, send out proposals professionally. It was also a large, large thing as I considered it. Mm -hmm. So what were you looking for when you were, when you went out? Didn't know, except yeah. you know what what I saw was available. Like, you know, there was Jobber, LMN. I was like one step away from onboarding LMN. I remember that. <laughs> wasn't that right when? Wasn't that right when uh, you and me met in you and I met at uh, Law Entrepreneur? That's correct. Was that yeah. was that 2021 or two? 2020? 2020. Mm, I think so. Yeah, I think you were. Yeah, Boy, it was that, before COVID. Wow, we that was a long Pretty time sure. ago. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, why did you? ultimately end up choosing Sync Dot? Um, I mean, in, in, in it, ultimately why I chose Sync Dot was, was a, a growing company, their founding vision, or why why they exist, was, it served my need. It was exactly what I needed to mm -hmm. fulfill my need. And um, I felt that, I mean, while LMN may have served my need, it were like a company way over my, my head and where, where I, not the company wasn't where I wanted to go, mm -hmm. um, but it, it it well may have served my need. It sure, just, yeah, it probably would have, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but yeah, it was interesting the the turnaround. Like I was 
just a mere step away from the man and then I'd first met you at um, Louisville. Oh I yeah, I forgot first, about that. Yes, that's right. <laughs> we were standing in. Um, <laughs> we were at the 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 influencer live thingy I or whatever. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I, I didn't know anything about synced up when I first saw. I was like, what, "What's synced up? That's weird. I don't know." <laughs> yeah, yeah. So then, uh, yeah, and then, and then seeing you at uh, Launch Burn Academy was just the best thing that that happened to the business. <laughs> Amazing. That's absolutely amazing. Yeah. I remember getting a phone call on the way I was driving home from Entrepreneur, and uh, you called me and you were like, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so yeah, you definitely dove in with all four feet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then when I started as a like onboarding, I didn't know what I was getting into. Like I didn't, I didn't know what I was signing up for really. Yeah. Um, just like what it would do for me and, um, what it could do. Um, also, like the the amount of work that I should put into it to make it make it work. Mm -hmm. So it, it took you know a couple months. That was a little shaky to start, but it, you know going from pen and paper was was what it took. Yeah. Which one thing I when I think back over your onboarding and transition experience, like just from what I remember is. It is hard to change your habits, mm -hmm. and ultimately, you kind of end up changing your way of thinking mm -hmm. about quoting and you know mm -hmm. a lot of different mm -hmm. aspects of the Absolutely. business. And um, that takes discipline and hard work. And I, you pushed through, and when you bumped up against those, like, well, I used to do it this way, or you know, whatever. Like, you 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 would listen or ask questions, and you kept on plugging away at it and you plugged, you broke through the wall of changing habits, which is so hard. Mm -hmm. So many people want, like from the seat I sit in, I see so many people that want what Synced Up does for the company. Sure. But they don't want to do the work. Like they don't want to get their guys to clock in and then they want to blame the employees that, well, the employees don't clock in, so now I can't job cost. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, mm -hmm. yeah, there's more, like the success that Synced Up can be the catalyst to in your business is only the catalyst. You mm -hmm. still need Absolutely. the work and the discipline and mm -hmm. the leadership and mm -hmm. the process and holding Once yourself accountable. Once it becomes account a habit, you wouldn't know how you got how you operated it without it. it. Yeah. yeah, but there definitely is a period there. The transitional pain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There definitely is a period there where you absolutely are tempted to go back to the comfortable way yeah. of knowing what yeah. you always. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and my guys were tempted with that too. Like, yeah, we're we're done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, so. What do you think, let's, I want to hear more about that. What do you think was causing them to say, we're done, like, let's not do this anymore? Um, it was a mean, like, ultimately me not knowing, not knowing the clock in, clock out process and being able to train them in that. Um, so they felt like they had kinda, to. I just put it on their lap, like, hey, use it, figure it out. I, I don't know myself. So knowing, going into it again, I would, I would want to know, before I implement a system, I would want to know more about it, uh, which I, I thought I had given myself a month grace. Well, if you don't, if you give yourself a month grace, you don't really change a habit, you know? Like yeah. You just, it doesn't really, ha it doesn't really happen. So, um, and then it was also possibly in the early stages of the app, there was um, the 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 clock out, clock in, clock out, uh, the drag time, the wait times. Mm, yeah, yeah. There was some time in the beginning. There was it was definitely slower uh, than it is now, especially on older devices. Mm -hmm. And um, and uh, I, I can see how. You know what you know what you wanted from the estimating and proposal yeah, side, absolutely. and then it was kind of like kick it out to them. Yeah. And I remember I remember going through something with snow removal jobs, like you had them mm. set up a specific way. Yeah, exactly. And mm -hmm. what you really intended to do it was another way. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of like that clash between mm -hmm. what the guys were supposed to do out in the field yeah. versus what you were trying to do for billing. And yeah, there there was some of that mm -hmm. um, transitional pain mm -hmm. there for sure. But just knowing the capabilities, how to leverage it. Yeah. Yeah. It. Yeah. Um, well then. I mean, today they're using it on every on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. what would you say 
um, and I know we talked to him a little bit there on the job site, but what, how do they feel about it today for, for your... Oh, they, I haven't asked them lately, but we love it. Like, yeah. We love it as a crew, and um, it's just the ease of clocking in, clocking out. I barely check over the hours at the end of the week when I submit them for payroll, mm -hmm. and it's, it's great. And do they kind of, do they use the information in the app, like the estimated versus actual progress um, bar and the material lists and that kind of, the address and the phone number? The and address and phone number. Pictures. We don't utilize that as much. No, uh, the, the hours, like yeah. watching the, the percentage and. Yeah, because I saw Ben, he pulled yeah. that up this morning on the job site. Yeah. You know, he was, we were on that big retaining wall job and he was uh, showing how, um, you know, the estimator versus actual yeah. here. <laughs> do you, do you, uh, is that a big part of what the information you look over? Um, at the end of the job. At the I end of the job. You it always doesn't review. really affect me throughout the job. I'm like, whatever it takes to, you know. You estimate it, then whatever it takes. That's right. And then at the end, you're like, what can I learn? Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So, um, I asked you what was the pain you were feeling before you were like, okay, I tell, you know, the, this know your numbers problem, which really is like, Another way you could, another phrase you could use is like you're just fixing your pricing, mm -hmm. you know, around the know your numbers mm -hmm. thing. Fixing your pricing and getting your estimates accurate. Mm -hmm. That's another way you could name this if you're wondering what we mean when we say, what do you mean by the know your numbers That's problem? That's right. Um, um, what? How do you feel today about you know? So you, you, I asked I asked the question in the context of what was the biggest challenge that you've overcome. So how do you feel today on the other side of feeling like you overcome it and have wrapped your head around um, it? Right now, it's it's kind of something that's part of the company, and it's working mm -hmm. on its on its own. I'm working on building other areas of the company that I don't I don't the, even think the staff, about. The staff, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a little bit of how once once it's working, you don't it doesn't get attention. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah. yeah, except for I mean, I I come in to tweak templates or make another template or something like yeah. that. Um, templates been huge. Like I can. It's been makes it a lot easier for the admin. Hey, just just use this template, and then you have your list. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, what about if you were to go back to when you started your business in 2017? What's one thing you would do different? Hmm. I don't know. I don't know that there's much I'd change. Really? That's good. <laughs> not not too much. I mean, I may have may have gotten some for CRM sooner. Um, I I don't want to say that hastily. I haven't really thought about how it would change or how it would start it differently. Probably knowing more about business before I get into it would. would what probably what be does that mean? Does it mean knowing how to read a profit and loss statement? Does it mean knowing how to deal with clients? Does it mean? Um, Managing, managing employees, managing, dealing with clients, um, knowing what, d yeah. Yeah, and managing employees, like, well, kind of, like, kind of what we touched on is like, as you grow, your systems change, your processes change, mm -hmm. and um, a good way to get employees unhappy is to throw something at them and with no explanation. Yeah, you know? absolutely, and that was, <laughs> that was certainly one of them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it's, it, it, getting a, a CRM or a software for estimating sooner mm -hmm. probably be my. Let's. It's probably. Um, we early on in the company we've. I, I I had I did not want to get a piece of equipment like like it was scary stuff for me like to the, spend that yeah, much to money. Spend that much money. Yeah. Um, so that was that was probably one of as as we grew. Uh, this one of the best decisions that launched the company forward was buying that first piece of equipment. Interesting. Like, it, it doubled our profit that year. Or our, really? Our income that year. Mm -hmm. Just because of how much more production more you could production. put? Wow. Mm -hmm. Which piece of equipment was that? Avant 755. That four-wheeled, mm -hmm. uh, what do you call that? The, the, the Green machine. Yeah, I know. Center but articulating. Center articulating. That's what I was looking for, yeah. We had a uh, MT-55 Bobcat that just sat around the yard. We really? Didn't, we didn't use it, barely. Um, it would go out a little bit, uh, but it wasn't ideal for like the type of work we were doing when we started like mulching, maintenance, and, and so on. Mm -hmm. um, so the the Avant coupled with a four-in-one bucket is just like 
it's a perfect match. You have to send me a link to that machine so I can put sure. it in the show notes of the podcast because I remember the first time I ran into that type of machine was I was over in Romania where my wife's from and our neighbor over there had um, had a, a, a little sawmill mm-hmm. and he had one of those things. That was the first I ran, I was like, well, what is that? Yeah. You know, these little, <laughs> they're from Europe, aren't they? Uh, Finland. Finland, yeah. yeah. But he would rip that thing around that sawmill, lifting big logs, and like it was, mm-hmm. it was nimble. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. So yeah, like we did this land, this entire landscape job. We staged everything in here. Uh-huh. Uh, we we didn't do anything but aerating and overseeding. No grass time. work. No grass work. Wow. Over, aerating and yeah, yeah. No, no reseeding. Correct. Yeah, that's impressive. That's yeah. that's been one of the, the things that was that really helps as well. I mean, we can't do it in every job, and I know. I, I toy with the idea, like, you just rip the grass up and... and Sometimes it's almost easy, yeah, more efficient to do that. Absolutely. Yeah. And so we do that on occasion. But, but I'm but telling you, like, just from experience with Tassie, one of the biggest sources of callbacks is grass that is not just pristine mm-hmm. perfect. Sure. You know, mm-hmm. and you can do everything right, and it mm-hmm. still takes a year or two to mm-hmm. get a good sod. Yeah. You know. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's saving that grass. Yeah, I know what saving you mean. The grass. Like, it's it. sometimes, mm-hmm. like, is it just... If we just ripped it up and just worked as efficiently as possible, would that be better, you mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. as opposed to trying to protect it, sure. you know? But, yeah. Um, and we've since, like, for larger projects, we've since used, even, we wouldn't have to, but we've used mats to protect the grass yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. And that... that for little important. jobs, like, you know, a couple-day jobs or one-day jobs, that is really mm-hmm. effective. Mm-hmm. It's worth it. Mm-hmm. Because once you get into doing grass, I mean, right there, I mean, you're, you're a half a day extra in yeah. just to, at least... Mm-hmm. Maybe if not, if not a whole day, mm-hmm. just to fix all the grass. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, well, uh, here's my here's another question I like to ask, just to kind of get the thoughts flowing. Is um, what's the best advice you've ever been given? Hmm. Chocolate ice cream is better than vanilla. Ah, <laughs> 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 oh, man, that's. I mean, I know you're always hungry for knowledge. Like, I yeah, know you're I'm, watching. You're watching Brian Fullerton's channel. You're, yeah. you know, you're watching. Yeah, I think you were watching Tassie's channel. That's how you knew me down at H and A, right? That's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. And uh, oh, so I know, I know you're consist- you're always seeking like, it. Yeah, just consistently improving. Like, not the, uh, not being right in like the way we do it is may not be the right way. Just exploring other options mm-hmm. and doing things more more efficiently or in a different a different way that when we done as far as like the best advice I was given uh, just watching how other people do it uh, how other people run their projects and so on has been very influential in how I run mine mm-hmm. um, yeah which looks like watching other people's content mm-hmm Mm-hmm. Or, I mean, I know you've been out to visit Tussie. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I know you go to ev- events, like mm-hmm. just different. I know when I think back to um, my years at Tussie, like we'd go to those events frequent, like every year we'd mm-hmm. go somewhere or multiple it's, it's events. It's an investment. It is an investment. <laughs> it's, it's like now. But you know what we did? It's, it's so easy to go do something like that and then yawn, ho-hum, come home and change nothing. Mm-hmm. If you do that, it's worthless. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, but I know um, at Tussie, we always kind of had this, like, I don't know. I, I don't know that what's, we ever formally said this is what we do. But every time we went to an event, we always were like, what's the one thing that we're going to bring home from this? Sure. Uh, whether it's a tool or a process or a, or a production, you know, whatever. Like, we'd always be like, what's the one thing we're going to take away from this? And um, over years and years of doing that, that produced the efficiency mm-hmm. the i mean in the early days before i was really involved in more of the i guess the leadership side of the the core team there at tussie before that like steve and derek and the guys were kind of tackling the whole they would go to seminars and stuff around the whole budgeting and mm-hmm. know your numbers and i remember they had a some for program i think on a cd drive that, okay. that they would use you know so you know they were like when i I, I see that in you. Like they were hungry, looking for ways to mm-hmm. go to those those events. But mm-hmm. yeah, the key thing is is bring something home mm-hmm. and change something. Mm-hmm. If you're not going to change anything, then forget it. Yeah, absolutely. Go and on a vacation. Like, <laughs> you <yeah>. know. <laughs> on the on the flip side, they can be like you. 
uh, they can make you want to buy equipment that you don't always have need for. <laughs> although it hasn't really happened to me. I mean, although I have this this um, this wish list or this vision board um, that of of equipment that I'd still like to have. Um, Let me guess. The very more. last bottom thing on the list is a tilt rotator. <laughs> The other way around. Oh. <laughs> You're not on Instagram, are you? No. Yeah. <laughs> it's like this correlation between yeah. got contractors that are on Instagram and tilt rotators. Yeah, it's exactly. Hilarious. I know. But yeah, like Jeremy Twyhart, he says synced up is the tilt rotator of landscaping yeah. software. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I I see the value, and I think it would it would do for it would do for the company what an Avant has done for me. Sure. Like I now have three of those machines, and although the second one wasn't near as profitable as the first one, like as return, and then same with the third, but it still has having those that machine available is is just mm -hmm. like you you can go home at the end of the day and and not not have to sleep the rest of the evening. Like you know, you yeah, home you're and, actually producing maybe even more without beating your body up. That's right. Yeah, I'm, Yeah, dude, like I remember, we'd do these one one day pond builds. Mm -hmm. We'd do up to an 11 by 16 with an eight foot stream in one day. <sighs> oh my goodness, like <laughs> those are, and we'd do them with no equipment. Mm -hmm. Like we'd have a ball cart to haul the boulders around. Wow. And then, the first, <sighs> then we started, then we had that ramrod machine I was telling you guys okay. about this morning, <laughs> which that was a big upgrade, but now, Tussie doesn't go out on a job without a mini X and either a dingo or an MT or a, or a skid loader. Sure. You know, won't, you know, there's no job that pretty much that they go to without that. That's pretty much how we run with Avon as well. Like I have an enclosed trailer with, with an Avon and almost every job would mm -hmm. we'll take an Avon out. Mm -hmm. But like I'm telling you, the before and after, like I remember being 18 and feeling like I was 80. Like we were just mm. beat, <laughs> yeah. you know. Yeah, and that's, that's the part that I don't want do to do to my guys. Like, yeah, I'll do it to myself. I don't yeah. want to, but. I, uh, I mean, now I don't even want to anymore, but yeah, um, I, I don't want to do that to my guys. Like, yeah. I'd, I'd love to well, I mean, have them. That's where you have maybe three to five year employees versus 10 to 15 or 20 year employees mm -hmm. is like, you can't do that forever. You mm -hmm. can't do that for very long. Yeah, absolutely. You, know, you beat yourself mm -hmm. up and you start wanting, maybe you enjoy what you do, but you're, you're just too beat up. That's right. You know, there, there is, there is a, there is a, that's, I've been, um, trying to figure that out like i love doing rock work and boulder work yeah but it's it's taxing so you really do body. you really do need a <laughs> tilt rotator then <laughs> I, to do more boulder work i would love to like a wall like this that's behind us yeah. that a tilt rotator would be perfect It'd for be that amazing yeah yeah but yeah well hey um thanks a lot for you know putting your faith and trust in us at synced up it's something we don't take lightly and um i know you've really done the work of leaning in and being willing to push through the resistance of changing habits. Mm -hmm. And that's something I want to commend you for. Um, but uh, yeah, thank you for supporting us and appreciate you being a part of the Synced Up crew. Absolutely, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, let's go see the uh, crew number two out on the job site. It's Yay. getting warm out here. It's time <laughs> to bring in some cold drinks. Quick plug for National Planner Supply. Check us out on Google. Um, we. I, I'll, sell, I'll ship these anywhere in the U.S. Oh, these are these metal, these metal, metal planters, which are planters. so cool. Yeah, and you were also saying, is that the same guy that, that makes those job boxes for you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting, because mm -hmm. like if you watch the YouTube version of this, like I'll have some B-roll where he has a, you have a like a job box. It's a, it's a large job box. Yeah, mm -hmm. with all your cutoff saw, D-wall equipment, everything. Laser level. Yeah, and then you get your tools instead of your tools being on the trailer out by the front yard on the street. Mm -hmm you bring everything right back into the backyard where you're working. Mm -hmm. That's really, really nice. That's, that's, that'll be one game changer for this year. It already has been. Yeah. It's incredible. Yeah. Okay, well, thanks for sharing those tips. I'll make sure to put the link and stuff down at the bottom. Thank you.